In this video, we're going to discuss audit sampling. So here's the definition provided by the AICPA. You'll notice that we're looking at an account balance or a class of transactions. So an account balance could be something like the inventory balance, the accounts receivable balance, a uh, class of transactions could be like a list of purchases. So we're looking at that and we're going to look at less than 100% of that account balance or class of transactions. Think about if you're auditing Walmart and you're trying to count their inventory. You can't go, if you're the auditor, you can't go to every single Walmart and count all the inventory. So you're gonna do less than 100% and then you're gonna try and evaluate some kind of characteristic about the inventory balance or the class of transactions, whether it be a list of purchases and so forth. So let me break it down to make it a little bit simpler. So we've noted that you're going to be looking at less than 100% of the population. Sometimes you might have an account balance or something where there's a very small number uh, or a very small amount and you could look at it and, or maybe there's a list of just five purchases. If we're talking about a class of transactions, you can look at all five. But a lot of times in auditing, you cannot look at 100% of the population. And so you're going to have to look at a sample, a subset of the population. And once you've done that, you're going to draw inferences about the population. Okay, You can't see the whole population. You can't observe all of it. But you're going to have this sample. You hope that the sample is going to be representative. We'll talk about that. And then you've got the results, and you're going to compare those to some type of benchmark. Okay, so if there's some kind of issue with the sample and you say, oh, inventory is a little bit overstated, that the sample of inventory that I counted, you're going to say, okay, well, how does that compare to some benchmark that I set as the auditor beforehand? You know, is it is it is the deviation too big where there's some kind of a problem? So sampling, so audit sampling can be used, it's used for internal controls and substantive procedures. So when you're testing internal controls, you're going to be doing sampling and when you're performing substantive tests and looking at what is, what is the value of accounts receivable, what should it be, and so forth, you're going to use sampling a lot. So let's take a look at internal controls first. So the auditor is trying to say, look, let's try and determine. So we've got some rate at which the controls are ineffective. We're going to draw a same. We're going to we're going to test some of the internal controls. We're, 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 we can't look at the entire population we can't be at the company all year long and see oh are the internal controls uh, do they exist and are they being applied correctly we can't do that but we're going to take a sample and we're going to go and say okay let's if there's somebody who's supposed to do some kind of reconciliation let's go and see if they do that reconciliation correctly so we're going to look at the rate at which controls are ineffective so we've got this deviation rate Think about that as, okay, something went wrong, the control wasn't applied effectively, or something like that. So we've got this deviation rate, and as the auditor, we want to know, does that deviation rate, does it exceed our tolerable rate of deviation? Now, you might think, well, the, the deviation rate should be zero. But think about it, mistakes happen, and if I told you one out of 10 million times there was a deviation, uh, are you going to uh, infer, well, you know, I guess we can't, we can't trust the internal controls at all. No, that's that's ridiculous. So you've got you've got some idea of what your tolerable rate of deviation is. You've got some percentage and you say, okay, you know, this would be tolerable as long as it's not above that. If if the deviation rate is above that, then you would say, okay, we've got an issue. Maybe we can't rely on this this company's internal controls to the extent that we thought we could. We're going to have to do more substantive testing. And so we're talking about sampling in the context of internal controls. We're talking about attribute sampling, okay, attribute sampling. Now, when we're talking about sampling with substantive procedures, now we're taking a look at an account balance. Again, could be inventory, something like that, uh, or a set of transactions, purchases, sales orders. Some, and we're trying to see, does this follow GAAP? Does it, does it follow generally accepted accounting principles? So we're going to look and maybe we count the inventory and we come up with what the value of the inventory should be. And we see that there's a misstatement that the inventory, maybe it was supposed to be $600 and they actually had it at $575. Okay, so we say, oh, well, and let, let, actually, let me reverse this. So let's say that it was supposed to be $575. So this is what it should be. And then this is what the client has at, they've, they've got the inventory. So the inventory is overstated by $25. So I wanted to set it up so that we're over, they have overstated the inventory by $25. The auditor, based on the sample of inventory that the, the auditor has counted, the inventory should be for that sample, $575. 
but they actually the client has it listed as six hundred dollars so they've overstated it by twenty five dollars but then we say okay is that big enough of an issue where we'd say okay we're going to infer that the inventory for the entire population is also overstated so we're going to compare that to where we got some kind of permissible amount which we'll call our tolerable misstatement so we have a certain amount maybe we said in the beginning that okay well given the sample we have the tolerable misstatement would be ten dollars so if it's if it's off by ten dollars and we see it's off by 25 and we say okay that exceeds our tolerable misstatement this is our like threshold that we set in advance and said this is what we would be okay with if they had an error of like seven dollars eight dollars something like that but they exceeded that it's 25 dollars and so we're going to say okay we're going to we're going to infer that the inventory balance is overstated we're going to talk to the client about that and so forth and this when we're doing sampling in the context of substantive procedures we refer to it as variable sampling okay so we're talking about internal controls we're talking about attribute sampling and substantive procedures variable sampling we're generally trying to look at what should the dollar amount be of accounts receivable or, or something like that now with any type of sampling we're going to have trade-offs between efficiency and effectiveness or well, let's see efficiency and effectiveness l l let me explain briefly and we'll, i'll talk about this more in a, in a future video hypothetically let's say you had a list of a hundred thousand transactions and you said you know what to really really understand whether these hundred thousand transactions follow gap I, i'm going to go through ninety nine thousand of them and you say wow that's you're really uh doing you're going to do an effective job you're going to be sampling ninety nine thousand out of a hundred thousand transactions you're going to get a pretty good idea uh, of whether these hundred thousand transactions follow gap even though you're not looking at all hundred thousand because you're looking at 99 percent of them right so you're gonna you're gonna your sample your as your sampling process is going to be very effective in determining uh whether this follows gap think about however the efficiency aspect you are looking at 99,000 transactions are you going to have the time is how many months is this going to take uh for for your the, the people on your your audit team to go through all these different transactions okay if it's going to take such a long time that it dominates the audit and you're just like look we're not able to go through 99,000 transactions and maybe maybe you find that by just looking at 10,000 transactions you and, and then going to 99,000 that the incremental benefit of looking at those extra 89,000 transactions doesn't add that much to the effectiveness of the audit so we're going to have this trade-off of the the higher the sample we have we're going to be more effective in terms of the con conclusions we draw about the population but we're losing efficiency because the more and more sampling we do, the, the larger the sample is, the more work it's going to be for us. And we'll talk about all these issues more in the videos to come.